Oh, and welcome to the second vlog of the Circuit Breaker series. So, for those of you who don't know what the Circuit Breaker is, it's basically a lockdown here in Singapore, uh, but um, essential services remain open. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Everything else is closed. Gyms are closed and um, restaurants are still um, not restaurants. Food centers are open and you can order food and you can bring it back. But anyway, the most important thing, which is the gym, is closed. So I'm having to make do with whatever I can find um, and still try and train to maintain my gains with pretty much lightweight. So as you can see, I'm uh, doing pull-ups here. Just found a beam at a rooftop and I'm really focusing on just um, closing the gap at the back of my elbows. That's that's essentially what a pull-up is, especially if you want to use the back. Um, just think of closing the gap at your elbows. These are really challenging, more challenging than regular pull-ups because the grip was so uh, difficult to hold on to. My forearms were absolutely burning um when doing them um uh, okay so these are bulgarian split squats a uh, pretty challenging movement uh, in terms of uh because it is number one unilateral which means that you're trading one side at a time so there's a big balance component that you have to bear in mind and number two is that you know you're bearing pretty much a lot of your weight all on one leg so it's very very challenging to do that uh you're i there are two variations that you can do when doing this a uh, quad focused variation and a glute and hamstring variation this in particular is a uh, quad variation how you do this you want to think of keeping your body very upright. You want to think about pushing your knee forward, closing the gap at the back of your knee, pushing with the balls of your feet. Things to look out for. Um, make sure that your heels don't come off the ground. If they do, you want to stop a little higher, a little sh wherever uh, is the lowest point that you can get to without your heel coming off the ground. It's pretty challenging because um, obviously the balance is a, is an issue. And number two, you're going to feel a very big stretch in your quad and your hip flexor in your back leg. And for a lot of us, our hip flexor is so tight from sitting down all day. So it's definitely not a movement for beginners. Uh, I would advise you to start with split squats. And if those are too easy for you, then progress to something like a Bulgarian split squat. And if that's too easy for you, then add some weight. Um... So, it's very simple. I keep it simple. I just think of those few things. Keep my body upright, knees forward, uh, push from the balls of your feet. And if you look at it from the front, uh, I'm just thinking of keeping my knee in line with my toe. Don't let it deviate left or right. It's most common for the knee to deviate in. And that's called knee valgus, which is actually one of the most uh, common... Um, causes of acl injuries so hopefully that gives you more reason to keep your knee in the same direction as your toes be very cautious about that another thing that i tend to be aware of is my hips i just want to make sure it's nice and level level to the floor not um caving in or tilting in one direction if it is that's typically an indication that your glute medius is weak. Your glute medius is what's responsible for keeping your hips level every time you go on one foot. Otherwise, when you walk, your hips would constantly be, be tilting left and right every time you take a step. Your glute medius has to be strong enough to keep your hips level every time you're bearing your weight on one leg. And if it's not, if you realize that it's tilting, you may want to address that, those weak glute medius. Uh, muscles and you can do that by throwing in an accessory movement at the end or you know you could warm up with some crab walks which tend to activate the glute medius so that you can train it better when you do this exercise um you can see that i'm wrapping up my um my legs when i do this and i'm wrapping up my arms when i do my upper body exercises that's called blood flow restriction training or bfr for short or otherwise known as occlusion training. And it's a really good tool to use, especially now. What it does is that it's it limits the blood flow back uh, carried by the veins. Um, 
and uh, it restricts uh, and because of that it doesn't allow for metabolites to be flushed out like lactic acid and stuff and what it does is that it actually makes uh, the muscle fatigue a lot faster and with a lot lighter weights so it's been f it's been shown through studies that you can actually make the same amount of gains with 30% of weight of your one rep max sorry as um, you could with 85% of your one rep max which is what we usually lift uh, when we lift in the 8 to 12 rep range um, with BFR training, 30% of your one rep max, that's a lot lighter. And I think it's a brilliant tool to use now when, you know, we don't have access to a gym, we don't have access to those heavy weights. Uh, we want, we only have lightweights and we want to make those lightweights productive. So I feel like BFR is a really good tool to use now. Uh, these push-ups, as you can see, um, I'm keeping my elbows or my my upper arm about 45 degrees away from my body and what that does is that it helps keep my shoulders out of it and uh, it helps keep my shoulders safe if you have uh if your elbows flare out you're going to use a lot of delts number one and number two you probably will run into some shoulder impingement issues if you carry on like that especially if you load it with heavier and heavier weight um with this uh with exercises like this uh, which uh, you, is a compound exercise. It uses more than one muscle group. Um, when you use BFR, that's going to really cause the smaller muscle groups that are occluded, like in this case the triceps, to fatigue fast. And that kind of serves as a reminder to activate and use the big, the other prime mover, which in this case is the chest. Uh, so my triceps were burning halfway through the set and I had to remind myself to think of activating the chest, think of bringing the elbows together. Um, and uh, the basics are pretty good in terms of still training the muscle to exhaustion within 6 to 30 reps. As long as you get the muscle to exhaustion within 6 to 30 reps, it's a good productive set uh, for building muscle. Um and as you can see, I had to take a bit of rest here because it was just burning so much. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I did about 20 reps on this. So another good set of building muscle. Um, so that is uh, my flat press. Another exercise you can do for chest are dips. So this was actually uh, something suggested by my good friend, Yen Kai. Uh, he looked at my previous video and... Um, he noticed that I hadn't done dips and uh, he really recommended it because for someone of my size and my strength, you know, I really should be doing something a lot more intense than push-ups. And uh, honestly, it had, it had only been the first week of Circuit Breaker. I, I, I didn't really know how to improvise some of the exercises and he gave me a suggestion that any 90 degree angle that you have with a couple of bars, you, can, you have perfect dip setup. So I tried it and yeah, it works perfectly. Uh, another thing that uh, that I do is uh, deficit pike push-ups. So pike push-ups are a vertical or incline press for your shoulders. And uh, this is a body weight exercise that we can do for our shoulders, which a lot of people kind of scratch their heads thinking, what can I do for shoulders? So this is one. I do it on a deficit because I like to get more range of motion. Deficit meaning that uh, my head is going below my hands and that way I'm getting more range of motion. I also like to do it with my feet elevated just so that I put a bit more weight and make it a bit more in, uh, on my shoulders and make it a bit more intense. Um, a staircase is brilliant for this. Uh, next I have TRX spider curls. So spider curls is a bicep curl with your elbows up. So your shoulders are in a more flexed position and this is gonna load your biceps in the fully shortened position. I like to uh, include different uh, variations of exercises to load my muscles in the shortened position and lengthened position and everywhere in between just so that I'm training the muscle through the full range of motion throughout my week's uh, training, the entire week's training, which is how it should be. 
Otherwise, you're, you're not going to get strong throughout uh, the entire range of motion. These are bodyweight skull crushers. So these are trading your triceps in a fully lengthened position. Uh, and these are pretty challenging too. Um, I mean, uh, skull crushers, it trains your triceps. It's an isolation exercise for your triceps. And uh, you're basically trying to lift your body weight with just your triceps. Really challenging, really good stuff. I like it. And it gets your lats and triceps in a really good stretched position. And uh, here I'm wrapping it up with some handstand practice. And I'm doing scapula elevation. So I'm really training my upper traps. And uh, and uh, they really hurt after this. I think I did 10, I managed 10 reps. Anyway, this is uh, some snippets of my training in the past week. I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do. And if nothing else, at least you, you see someone else training and hopefully it motivates you. So take care. And I'll talk to you next week.